Hi, this is Simon Opstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at some simple techniques for creating this basic eclipse effect. Now, it's not meant to be photorealistic or scientifically accurate, but there are hopefully quite a few useful things in here that you can learn from. So, to start off with, quick look at our project setup, 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second, 192 frames, or if you prefer, you can go for 8 seconds. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to the library generators, and we're going to look for caustics. So the first thing we're going to do with this is to come over to filters and distortion, and we're going to apply polar. And now what the polar filter does, it basically converts sort of XY position information into rotation information. And that's why instead of getting that sort of flat result, we are getting this much more sort of circular effect of the caustics. Also, while we're at it, let's come to tiling and offset. And I'm just going to drop that offset below the polar come over to the inspector. And what I want to do is I want to add a ramp to the vertical offset. So add parameter behavior ramp. And the end value we're going to have is 25. And I think you can see the effect that has is that it creates this sort of outward ripple effect. Actually, let's exaggerate this so you can see it more clearly. So I'm going to go for 100. And you can see that we're getting this sort of rippling out effect. Now, don't worry about this sort of join that we see here because the other filters we're going to add is going to disguise that. So anyway, I'm going to reduce that back down to 25. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come to filters and tiling and we're going to add a random tile and that will take care of any of those joins. And you can see how, just straight out of the box what a nice effect that's creating as a sort of generic kind of noise texture. But in this case, we're going to go with a radius of 480 just to make those tiles a little bit larger. Then I want to come back to filters and distortion and I want to grab twirl. Now, what I should have done with the caustics is come over and adjust the height so that it's also 1920. And I'm going to come over to the twirl filter. I'm going to set that amount down to zero and to that 12 value, and again, I'm going to add parameter behavior ramp, and I'm going to set that end value to negative 45. And that's just going to create, I hopefully you can see this sort of circular motion like that. And the final filter I'm going to add here is distortion and bulge. And I'm going to have an amount of 1000 and a scale of 2. So next, let's add a light to this scene. So add a light, switch to 3D. Let's give it a, some color. So I want to make it a little bit sort of yellowy like this, not too saturated, something like that. I'm going to crank its intensity up to 10,000, which is all quite dramatic, but then we're also going to increase the fall off to 30%. And also we're going to come to properties position and we're going to set that Z position to 10. Next thing I'm going to do is come back into this group here with the caustics in it, and I'm going to duplicate that caustics. And first of all, I'm going to set its blend mode to add. So what I'm going to do here is just a slight tweak to the order of these filters. I'm going to put the random tile above the twirl like that, and it'll just give us a slightly different look for this layer. And I'm also going to increase the brightness of this caustics generator all the way up to, I think, something like 40. So this is all starting to look nice and bright, I think. Next, I want to add a new group. So object new group, and this needs to be above the, the existing one. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to select the circle tool here. And holding down the shift key, I'm going to draw out a circle like that. Come over to properties and center it up. Over here in the geometry, I'm going to set the size of this to 180. And then I'm going to right click and duplicate. So that circle was white, obviously, as you saw, white fill. This one, we're going to change the fill color to black. And what we want to do with this group is to turn off its lighting. So come down to the lighting here and switch it from inherited to off. Then let's come back to our white circle, shape, style. 
And let's increase that feather to something like, I don't know, 27, 28. Let's also come to filters and stylize and crystallize, because I want this to be kind of boiling around the edges like that. And those default values for the crystallize are pretty good, I think. And then let's also copy that onto the black circle. So holding down the Option key to copy it. In this case, we want to have the minimum size, which is three. And we just want to knock back that mix value to something like 75. And let's also come over to the style for this black shape and set the feather to negative 25. Then what I want to do is with this group, come to color and levels. And let's switch to blue and grabbing this control here. Let's just bring that blue down till this is sort of matching our light color like that. And then to this group, I'm going to add glow and neon. And I need to change the order of these two filters. So put the levels above the neon. And you can see that's obviously a lot brighter when we've got that order correct. So then pretty much the final stage is I'm going to duplicate this caustics one more time. So right click and duplicate. And to it, I'm going to add a circular mask. So holding down the option and shift key, draw out a mask from the center like so. Let's make sure to center it up. I'm going to set the mask radius to 225. I'm going to come over to filters and add a stylized crystallize to it. I'm going to set that amount up to 30 because I want this kind of boiling thing around the edge like this, starting to look better. And I'm also just going to add a very slight blur to this. So blur and Gaussian blur. And I think an amount of eight is probably enough for that. And my eclipsing moon is a little bit too small. So I'm going to come over to this black circle and just increase that radius up to something like 190. And now you can see pretty much we've got the effect. There's all sorts of like little tweaks you could do to it. But I think in general, that is pretty much what I had in mind. Obviously, if you wanted to animate the eclipse happening, you could just move the, the black circle probably not terribly convincing, but you know, if you wanted something that's just very sort of slightly offset, it kind of works, I think. And one final little trick I want to show you if you want your moon to be less of a black hole is to select this black circle and come to filters and blur and Gaussian blur, come to the inspector. And let's set the amount to something really large, like 500. And then what we can do is simply play with this mix amount till we get a little bit more of that kind of inner glow. Maybe even increase that, that amount all the way like that. And then literally just dial that back. What you are going to get, unfortunately, is, is banding and you'll probably need to add a lot of grain to this. So you could come to stylize and add noise. Select blue noise to reduce banding and then dial back the mix value. Unfortunately, it also makes it a little bit brighter, so you have to compensate with everything else. But that's a little trick that you can try in addition. Uh, what I used, of course, for this project was Hawaii Superglow, which just makes all of this so much easier because it just automatically looks much better. So um, I didn't use the levels and the neon, but I used Hawaii Superglow on here immediately at the default, so you can see how much more effective that is. Turned down the blue and you get this really nice sort of fringing here. You know, this is, this is where it, pay, it pays to have a really nice glow effect at your fingertips. So anyway, I hope there have been a few useful bits and pieces in there. Obviously, this is not meant to be photorealistic or scientifically accurate or anything like that, but there's some quite interesting sort of textural effects here that you can use for other purposes as well, I hope. So thanks very much indeed for watching and see you again soon.